Schweitzer. I'm the chef owner of Bayona Restaurant in the French Quarter and co-owner of Herb St. Restaurant down on uh, 701 St. Charles Avenue. And today we're, we're at Bayona and I'm going to show you how to prepare one of the dishes out of my cookbook. And this is also something that we uh, use a lot at Bayona, but it's a great, great home dish, something that you uh, can prepare very easily. Makes a good Mardi Gras dish because you can also use it a lot of different ways. And that is jalapeno roast pork. And the cut that we use is called the pork shoulder or Boston butt. Uh, you can buy it bone-in or boneless. It's inexpensive and very, very tasty uh, once you finish with it. It usually comes in about, this is a boneless one, and usually comes uh, in about a four to five pound piece. Now that's kind of a lot normally for, you know, for, for a, a regular sized family. Um, so there's a couple different things you can do, do with it. You can just take it, cut it right in half, and pop one half into the freezer, or, uh, you know, wrap it up, freeze it for a later use and just cook a half at a time, which would be a great deal for a, a family of four, even with a little bit of leftover usually. Uh, if you're cooking for Mardi Gras and you're going to expect a crowd, then go ahead and do the whole thing. Um, a lot of the, all this fat, you see this, um, this marbling here, a lot of that is going to render out. In fact, most of it is going to render out. And when you go to use the meat, any uh, chunks of fat that did not render in the oven, you could just easily pull the little part. So we're going to season this really, really well. A lot of salt and pepper. We're also going to take some thyme, fresh thyme. And I just, you can pick it, or I just generally take it and chop it up real fine. Unless you got like the real woody stems you can take out with the finer stems. You just chop up. We also add jalapeno. Probably don't want the seeds. So you can just split it lengthwise and cut the seeds out. The seeds are usually the hottest part. The seeds in these little uh, ribs here. So you want, you know, jalapeno flavor, but you don't want it to be so hot that you can't eat it. I love the actual taste of the jalapenos. A little bit of seed is fine, not a big deal. Just take it. Cut them like flies. Oops. Again, just mince that up. And you can uh, throw all this stuff together in a food processor with your whole garlic cloves. Kind of make a little mince out of it. Uh, one other thing that we do, which is not in the recipe, but add a little bit of chopped up onion. That makes it really good too. And another addition that we uh, sometimes decide to throw in is a little uh, zest of orange and lime. This is just a little microplane, a great tool for getting lots of zest in a quick period of time without having to break your knuckles. Lime and throw a little, throw a little of that in there too. The citrus, citrus is really good with the uh, pork. Adds kind of a bright note in there. So get all that. Mix up all these seasonings. Just kind of lay them in there. You can pierce it. Doesn't really matter where, and you can stick some of that in there. And now I'm going to blanch uh, some beef. Put a little bit of 
bit of just a little bit of uh, olive oil, canola oil. Just want to rub that all over. Oops, by getting the garlic too. Lots of chopped garlic. Don't forget that. Shove that garlic in there. Just put the whole thing. So you got onion, orange zest, lime zest, jalapeno, thyme, black pepper, salt. Check it periodically. Uh, if it looks like it's getting too dry, you can add a little bit of water to it, just so you'll have some nice juices on the bottom. And this is what it should look like. When you open the foil, open it carefully because there's going to be steam. Ooh. This is what it's going to look like in a few hours. See, it's going to be very tender. You want it to be tender enough that you can pretty much pull it apart with a fork or a spoon. See how moist that meat is. And there's still a little bit of fat up here, but you can easily remove that fat and discard it. So as you look through the meat, you, know, you may see a little more fat, but like I said, once it cools a little bit, cool enough to handle, you can go through it and shred the meat or just keep it in chunks like this. This is great for making, uh, let's see, how would I, uh, you, there's several different ways you can uh, prepare this. You can have it just like that, sort of chunky with uh, black beans and rice. Um, that is very delicious, or you can make a sandwich with it, um, sort of a cochon belay sandwich with, with uh, pickled cabbage and mustard, uh, Creole mustard and mayonnaise on some good bread. Uh, but today I thought I'd show you how to make uh, quesadillas, because I thought that would be another good Mardi Gras uh, food that you can grab and go, grab and eat on the run, and uh, a nice um, treatment for the carnival season. So we're going to let this cool down. We're going to make our uh, a little sauce with our um, for our quesadillas. All right. This is a mango ancho sauce, and we use uh, ancho chilies, which are dried chilies you can find in uh, various. Um, grocery store, you know, sometimes in the, the uh, international food section. And the way I do this, this can be done in a, in a pan, in a hot pan or an oven. Toast the chilies, just in a dry pan for a minute. See, it kind of makes them puff up. These are actually uh, guajillo chilies, but we normally use anchos. But any kind of good, you can even use uh, chipotles or any kind of chili. I have some little pieces of uh, ancho here. I'm going to toast those too, just to get a nice toasty flavor on them. And the sauce can easily 
be done in 20 minutes. We're just gonna put them in a little water and let them soak on the fire for a few minutes just to clump them up and get them a little bit moist. Then we're gonna take our mango. We wanna try to find a nice ripe mango that's got some give to it. Even an overripe mango is just, this is a perfect use for one. If you have one that you left out a little too long and it's kind of mushy, generally it'll be just right for making sauce with. Better a little overripe than underripe. Chop it up a little bit before you throw it in the blender so the blender doesn't have to work too hard. Just pop it right in there.
if it's easier, you can uh, mash up the avocado and uh, just smear it on the other half. Maybe just a little, little bit more cheese to kind of stick the... I do fold over ones because I find they're easier to manage than whole big round ones. Fold that over. And we go back to our... I put a little oil on there, but you don't even have to do that. These can actually be done in a dry pan, and they come out just fine. Fold it over, let her down. Once they're done like this, you can throw them in the microwave for a second. Fifteen seconds. And just fizzle up with a little bit of this sauce. Mardi Gras or uh, pretty much any time. After work around midnight works for me.